Joan Miro, a Catalan painter, is an artist, and I'm going to flash up some examples of his work on screen, who throughout his life went through various uh, phases of his work, and a thread that seems consistent throughout, throughout his, his work is that he seems to be getting closer and closer to some fundamental aspect of what it is to be creative. Now, in some of my own recent work, this piece is a, a work in progress and is kind of representative of the kind of style that I'm moving towards. I'm finding much, much greater creative freedom than I've previously had in a lot of my artwork. Um, another piece here, this is a sketch that I'm working on. This began as a kind of observation of the garden, but then turned into just a very kind of stylized and perhaps symbolic style, um, which I find is quite reminiscent of, of some of, of Miro's work. And being able to work like this and being able to trans transform my creativity into these quite uh, free ways of working uh, is allowing me to really just express this joy of creativity and this constant... Um, just this constant creative energy that's that's always there waiting to come out and, and you know, can't really go wrong. It's it's not too... Um, basically, I'm finding a lot more creative freedom at the moment and uh, I'm really happy about it. And this video is going to be a kind of manifesto for how um, my creativity is, is transforming at the moment um, and facilitating a much so more sort of moment-to-moment relationship with my mind and, and my ideas and my positivity. So, yeah. So I'm sort of trying to bring us here onto the same page. So I am like looking to start to have creative ideas that suit a more fast paced way of working, I suppose. I'm not saying I'm going to be throwing paint around willy nilly, like really just you know, fast and careless, but I'm looking to uh, expand the way that I work to accommodate more fluid styles of painting um, that can perhaps get ideas down um, in more moment-to-moment -moment ways where the piece of work becomes a relationship and a dialogue with my ideas in the moment rather than just these long stretched out periods of time where I'm just filling spaces with patterns and it's not really this creative dialogue as much when you're doing that. Um, so so that's why I personally need to get going this idea of how do we have creative ideas, how do we think creatively. Um, you might have a multitude of, of reasons why you want to be able to think creatively or to be able to develop creative ideas. Um, focus number one. But I don't really mean focus, I don't mean sort of concentration or like zen out, you know, um, me meditation states or anything like that. I mean focus in more of the scientific sense where uh, a lens, uh, like a magnifying glass for example, will take a whole range of light and bring it to a point and focus it on that point, sometimes with enough intensity that it can um, like burn a hole in a leaf. I'm sure we've all, well, I'm sure a lot of us have done that as a child with a magnifying glass. Um, fun. Um, but what I'm talking about is that in the world of ideas, in the world of thought and, and all of the possibilities that could be, we're dealing with such a vast spectrum that we kind of do need to funnel a lot of that into a tighter space so that it becomes workable. Because otherwise we're, we can be lost out in the vastness of it all. And in the realm of ideas, we're not only dealing with the possible, but we're also dealing with that whole other realm of the impossible. So it's doubly infinite. So it's what, what do we do with that? So the simple question would be, what kind of creative idea are you looking to have? Um, and you see, this is the trick. This is where you need to realise that it already becomes a balancing act at this point. It already becomes about this 
freedom and restriction balance. Too much freedom, you're lost out in the infinite space. Too much restriction, and you become trapped in a kind of, become trapped in your own mind, essentially. Some artists talk about limitations. I've never liked that thing of these are now the rules and we will go from start to finish with this piece of music or this painting abiding by those rules. That, that doesn't sit right with me. It's more about just think of some colours, just what comes to mind or let's just choose a percussion instru instrument to begin with or a synth instrument to begin with, whatever it is if you're producing a piece of music. In this way, you're not posing a limit as such. You're actually manifesting what I would consider to be like a door on the surface of that infinite that we talked about. Simply put, you're creating here an anchor thought, a detail, a nugget of info that your mind can then begin to orbit around, a starting point. So we're in orbit and I personally am still just in my mind at this point as a painter. Um, as a musician, you may have had a little toot or a strum by this point, uh, but I've barely lifted the um, cover of my sketchbook. Um, and I'll explain why. So an idea, right? It's, it's the thing of the mind. This is a mind game. It's simply time to close your eyes and see. And for me, it's literally about seeing the first thing that I see. You've got to remember you're relating to your own mind in the moment to moment to moment. That's what it is. So whereas I held some colours in my mind and saw behind my eyelids the first forms that those colours wrapped themselves into and you know, don't get me wrong, like, I close my eyes now and because there's a window behind the camera, there's a, like a strong light coming from that rectangle of, of the window. And when I close my eyes, that rectangle is still kind of singed onto my retina. And so those are the first shapes, the kind of shapes that that window is creating and, and some of the dark shapes in the distance where the, the light isn't coming over the horizon, for example. Those shapes set off the initial idea or that that's the first thing that I'm seeing, that's the thing that I'm talking about is the impulse. I would sketch this down, that what I'm seeing uh, behind my eyelids right now, even if it's simple blocky shapes, that's where to start. Um, you know, if, if there's something you've got a hold of, get a hold of it. Um, and then it's about introducing something new at that exact moment. So this is where the freedom restriction interplay um, really comes in it's when you've when you've grasped something you've grabbed that's the restriction so now it's time to open it up a little bit to freedom and then grab something more and then you've got that and now that's restricted so then just without letting too much escape get something more and it's like blowing up a tire of a bike you're trying to get air in but being careful when you you know unscrew to take the uh, the bike pump off not let too much air out and you're gradually building up in that way. Um, so say you've got like a riff in your mind, get that riff jotted down, whether it's you maybe playing it, recording it, if you're on the computer, record it in, get it on a loop. And then at that point, that's your restriction. Now the freedom would be get that drum loop, that first drum loop that comes to mind when you hear that riff that you've got down. So the, the process I'm trying to get across in this video um, is essentially in support of the idea that this moment-to-moment -moment dialogue with the mind and this grasping of an initial impulse point which again comes from that moment of the now. For me, this is our... Oh, this is something that I reach for as a defence against doubt. With this process, it's quite a sure-fire way of staying one step ahead of doubt. 
Now, again, the process I'm describing in this video, it's not the be all and end all of creating. You know, you, you don't necessarily go from start to finish of a work of art being in the moment. That's not how it works. We're talking here about the generation of creative ideas and this is a kind of wellspring that you can draw upon throughout the process of making art. So how do I say that it's keeping one step ahead of doubt? Well, what I mean is there's no space for unhappiness with this kind of idea generation. There, there is only happiness because It's that whatever you are doing is all that is to be done at each point. I call, I've got a term for this that I want to elaborate more in, in a future video. Um, I call this the active symbol. You can think of it as the flower or the, the plant, the, the organic growth that is a representation of the moment as it moves because the moment is here, but now it's here. You know, it moves with us, it's it's coming through time, the moment, it's now. And because I've, through this video, kind of captured this state of mind that I'm in right now, um, and I'm trying to convey it so that it might have a positive impact on your creativity. That's the hope, anyway. Um, so just do is the message of this video, I suppose, just do. I hope that this video has not been too um, much of a letdown on the promise, I suppose. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed it at all, please subscribe to the channel because I do strive to keep making more videos steadily and gradually. And please share this with someone if you think someone would benefit from this. Please share it. It helps me get my voice out there and a greater subscribe account. And I just want to share my thoughts and my artwork generally. So, yeah. Cheers for all your help and your watching of this video today, guys. Cheers.